there on Kakaki Social. Let's find out what Nigerians have been talking about on the social media platform. I am shaking my head and saying, don't I just like your one-handed Agbada? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sally. Good morning, TV. And good morning, Nigerians and our viewers across the world. You're watching AIT and this is Kakaki Social. I am Uhimaya Maize, your anchor on this segment. With just two days to the 2019 presidential election, the social media is burning again. This time around, it seems as if the APC is deploying fake news as a weapon against the PDP opposition party. Yesterday in the social media, a letter purportedly written by Ballard Partners, the U.S. lobby firm contracted by the PDP presidential campaign organization, uh, directed uh, to the DG of the campaign, Senate President Bukola Saraki. Uh, that letter saw face in the social media yesterday, but it turns out that there are a lot of problems about that letter. Clearly, from what uh, a lot of people have seen, and from what we can also see, that letter is a fake letter. But this was what happened yesterday. Top influencers of the APC on social media released this letter, breaking foreign firm hired by the Atiku campaign organization headed by Bukola Saraki predicts loss for Atiku. The results of the poll are, to put it bluntly, very negative for us. Quoting a statement from that letter. And then the Twitter user who shared this, Jeff Phillips, uh, said, read more of the report here. This is the so-called letter that was purportedly written by Ballard Partners, uh, the U.S. lobby firm uh, working for the PDP presidential campaign, signed by Brian D. Ballard. Uh, but it turns out that uh, scrutinizing that letter, there are a lot of issues about that letter. Can we go back very quickly to that letter once again? Uh, you can see the signature of uh, Brian Ballard has actually been lifted from somewhere and pasted here, which is uh, clearly not uh, what it should be on an, in an original or authentic letter. So clearly this document has been forged. And let's go on and take a look at how the APC uh, talked about it yesterday. Uh, actually, the spokesperson of the APC presidential campaign, a senior advocate of Nigeria who, as many have said, should know better, tweeted this. He said they paid millions of dollars to tell them what we already know, further amplifying this, uh, this document, which has turned out to be a fake document. And of course, uh, the new media aide to President Muhammadu Buhari, Bashir Ahmad, also joined the conversation. He said, we are not taking this for granted. At this final stage, we are doubling our efforts. We are all going out on Saturday to vote Buhari, and Buhari will win. Buari again, inshallah, still sharing that uh, letter which uh, broke the internet yesterday. Uh, Mr. Busidik tweeted and said, put Brian Bala's letter to Saraki about not having a chance in the election. And the comment by Atiku campaign spokesman, Shagun Shoumi, side by side, and you'll see the correlation. Referring to Shagun Shoumi's uh, purported uh, tape where he said that Atiku no longer can no longer win the election without rigging. That has also been disclaimed as fake news. But Ballard firm has issued a statement yesterday, statement from Brian Ballard, quoting, a letter allegedly sent by me on February 5, 2019, regarding the Nigerian presidential is fraudulent. My signature has been forged. Ballard Partners has not conducted any survey research on behalf of the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria. And they continued uh, in that statement from Ballard firm, the entire contents of the letter are false and no individual employed by Ballard Partners has been involved in any of the actions cited in this phony letter. This has been disclaimed by Ballard Partners as fake news. This is coming at a time that Nigerians are really concerned about the scourge of fake news. You will recall that some months ago, the Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, participated in an end fake news con uh, uh, a conference organized by the BBC and yeah, all partners and all democratic actors agreed that they were going to do whatever it takes to end fake news. Osita Chidoka responding to the conversation said, we are laughing at the corruption fighters doing what they know best, forgery. They forge letters from Ballard Firm, thinking it is like NYSC and YX certificates. Desperation has set in. The speakable from Osita Chidoka, we saw that tweet from Ayo Shogunro, a Nigerian a Twitter user who had actually lapped up the information of that letter, thinking it was real when he discovered it was fake tweeted. I was fooled by that fake poll report. Even if I didn't dislike Buhari's policies, APC's philosophy of forgery, disinformation, propaganda and deceitful campaign tricks is enough to put me off. No conscientious person can align with such a party. 
how low can one party go? From Ayo Shogunro, we saw that tweet yesterday, and from uh, Twitter user KC Niger, why PDP is keeping its campaign clean without a criminal and rancor, APC in last kick of a dying horse is now a purview of fake news. From fake audio of Shogun Shoumi to fake report from ballot partners, APC is desperate. Their online headsmen have resorted to Jejun politics. From KC Niger, we saw that tweet yesterday from Papa Donkey tweeting, one, dear police, INEC, in an attempt to discredit our candidate Atiku and reduce the high probability of his electoral victory on Saturday, leading APC members in the Buari campaign have concocted a fake letter and forged the signature of an American, Mr. Brian Ballard. Let's take a look at more that he said in another tweet. Two, they circulated a fraudulent letter widely in social media and have thus attempted to criminally and illegally interfere with free and fair elections. Their names are Jeff Phillips one, First is Kea Morsan, Mr. I.D., D. Olushagun, O.C. Swave, Mr. Jax, etc. Uh, from that Twitter, he's a Papa Donkey, and then he concluded in the third tweet. Let's take a look at what he said. Three, I am particularly dismayed that on the very day both our candidates signed a peace accord, Festus Kayamo, a senior advocate of Nigeria and the director of the Buari presidential campaign, would involve himself in such gutter behavior. And lastly, four, I therefore call on the police to investigate this crime. And this was how the reactions came yesterday to this letter, which was uh, purportedly written by Brian Ballard uh, to the pre PDP president presidential campaign and of course a former presidential aspirant of the APC Adamu Garba also pushing this narrative pushing this fake news said the research paper released by Ballard Partners though refuted as part of crisis management is brutally honest and archive worthy I've gone through it a win for Buari is not a prediction but an assurance Nigerians have made their decision that February 16 is for APC no worries from Adamu Garba uh, tweeting this surprisingly pushing what clearly everyone has seen it was a, was a forged forged document from Miss Wilson Megan Wilson who works with Bloomberg government a journalist with Bloomberg uh, tweeted yesterday and said uh, Brian Ballard released a statement saying that this letter is fraudulent and his signature was forged not a definitive proof but you can clearly see that an image of his signature had been cut out and placed in the PDF image. Also, that grammar though, uh, talking about the grammar that was used to construct uh, that letter. And if you read that letter very well, some portions of that letter, you could see Brian Ballard actually writing to the DG of the pre PDP presidential campaign and saying, uh, you know how we lost to Hillary in 2016. But uh, I don't know any professional would actually put that in a letter, such a very very confidential and uh, very very co serious letter we move now to this issue with is trending also sega link shared this video with us jeremy Gaines is the is the nigerian uh german energy partnership director he made a comment about what nigerians should expect and the current situation of things in the country ahead of the 2019 presidential elections the video you're about to watch which was shared by sega link is an interview that jeremy Gaines had with dr weller let's take a look at this uh, tweet only a lunatic will want the aberration of now to continue the power is in your hands to make the necessary change happen refuse to be intimidated the country belongs to all of us no one can force themselves on us without the capacity and responsibility thereof never again uh, let's take a look at this video very quickly and some of the comments that followed change for the worse only within the last two years unemployment has gone from 18 percent to 23 percent if you poll Nigerians who are going to vote, corruption is actually only third on their list of what counts. What counts is employment, and that what counts after that is poverty. The incoming government has got to get the fin financial, fiscal, and monetary policy tweaked in such a way that it is coherent, and that it is pro-business so that SMEs can start creating jobs. And the real place where they will create jobs will be in the agro-industry. At the moment, Nigeria doesn't feed itself, and yet it has marvellous soil that is waiting to be exploited. To that end, it doesn't need major large roads, it needs rural roads that gets products from the small mm. farms to cooperatives to market. And of course, all this infrastructure costs money, which is why foreign investment would be very, very important, but it's faulted in recent years. What are investors exactly looking for? What does Nigeria have to do to attract more investment? I think they have to show that they do have a coherent macroeconomic policy and that that policy rests on a clear regulatory regime and on the rule of law. 
and of late there have been some difficulties with the rule of law. The Chief Justice of Nigeria was suspended by the President, some say unconstitutionally. That puts a damper on things, and foreign direct investment has indeed dropped by 20%. It's been discouraged by unclear regimes as regard customs. It's troubled by the fact that access to foreign exchange is not good. That access is required if you wish to repatriate your profits. It's also been hampered by a perception of security that is indeed true. The incoming government must, first and foremost, solve the security problems in the country. Mm. Since President Buhari declared Boko Haram defeated, 22,000 people have been killed. Oh, that yeah. situation has to change. All right, Jeremy, I, I, I understand, obviously, whoever wins the next election has a lot of work on his plate. Uh, Jeremy Gaines, the coordinator of the Nigerian-German Energy Partnership. Thank you so much. Okay, let's take a look at the comments from Grace Stevens tweet and said, I love the way the man kept saying the incoming government, the world knows APC aren't coming back. From Grace Stevens, we saw that tweet. And then uh, from Ayoma Opurum tweet and said, no matter how they intend to spin the truth, this is the reality as viewed by the international community and most of us at home. And then uh, one more Twitter user tweeting, Shuki U Dubem said, how come that foreign bodies know that we need know what we need in this country in order for things to work imagine everyone in this world knows that we have a fertile land, land for agriculture yet we cannot even feed our communities from the produce gotten in our farmlands nigeria decides and talking about what nigerians really want in the 2019 presidential elections uh, the bbc traveled in around lagos in a bus uh, interviewing nigerian citizens asking them what their expectations are from this 2019 presidential elections let's take a look from the from the presidency to the cleaner in an office we need to change ourselves let's take a look at this video from the bbc <laughs> We need the government to help us to change the image that has been portrayed out of Nigeria. I was listening to a video yesterday where a former Prime Minister of Kenya was joking about Nigeria as being a, a corrupt country. You can imagine how Nigeria has degenerated to for a fellow African country. So they won't be joking about us like that. So we need a lot of all those things to change. And then we need vibrant leaders. I'm serious because majority of the leaders that we have, it, they are not proactive enough. We need somebody that, that really knows what we want and can really go in search of it and just do it for us. Those things that are affecting people now, especially youth, is unemployment. Government should create jobs for people. I want to talk about the educational section because going on NASA strike is disturbing with the youth. Every year they go for strike. By the time we spend five years instead of four years in school or six years, then after that we go for youth service for one year. After you finish your service, you still start puzzling for job. There is no job. In other countries, you can't hear of strike. Many Nigerians are going to Ghana to study. Please, I'm begging the government, let them stop it. We don't need strike in our country. In Matthew 10, 10, it says that workers deserve their keep. They deserve their food. Government should be able to be paying them as and when due so that they will be able to impact. And another thing is about electricity. That's one of the necessity of life. How can a student subscribe and maybe throughout the whole week, there will be no light and the subscription will just go like that. And the money that the student used for that was mainly for a research. It is very bad. In my area, there is no water now. By the time they want to bring their bill, they will give you water for two or three days. Which is very, very important for human beings. You see, water, light, road. Those are the essential things for human beings. But they will not give us. The road is very bad. I can't come out with my car because of the road. Instead of that, I'll just be using my money to enter public travel. So I don't have much to say. Government themselves know what they're supposed to do for the masses. They don't, we don't do this for ourselves. Fellow have said it earlier before you went there. Suffering and smelling. 
what we need to change is, is ourselves. We, we, we need, need to change our own perspective about life generally. From the presidency to the cleaner in, the, in an office, I guess we need to change ourselves because in these positions that we, we find ourselves, we can impact more. And then when we do that, we are changing the whole country. Okay, thank you for watching that video. And of course, uh, this is what Nigerian leaders are promising the people. You just saw a video of the people talking about the things they expect from the leadership. But um, Tunde had not shared this video with us. And he captioned it. The only word he had to say was Nigeria. Let's take a look at this video. No, <laughs> 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 So now the next level will be this. Now for four years, ABC. Gary, Gary, see Gary. Gary, Gary. Ha 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 ha
Make quarrels. Quarrels. For reason best known to them, they are about, they are appropriating the collective ownership of Biafra to themselves. Ta! You don't have such powers. You cannot appropriate our collective destiny. You don't have it, and nobody will give it to you. You cannot stand up somewhere without consultation with all Biafrans and declare that there will be election by court in Biafra. You will not succeed. And you know you don't have such power. You are working for the enemies. You are working for the enemies. The only beneficiary of a boycott is this ever lying boycott. God forbid that you are working for him. Because sooner or later, whatever he is eating will come to light. And it will not be too late. Biafrans will come in judgment against you. Biafrans will come in judgment against you. Wow, wow, wow. Time is not our friend. So much more to talk about this morning. So much more to show you. But this is where we draw the curtain this morning on Kakaki Social. Please follow the conversation on all our social media platforms at Kakaki Social on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please subscribe also to our YouTube channel, Kakaki Social. I am Ohimaya Maize. Handing you over back now to Salamatu and Utive. All right, thank you very much, Ohimaya. We'll suspend that inspection until when we're done on this particular <laughs> program. Yes, indeed. Have a great day.